Battles are won through savagery and cunning. The more a general contributes to a maneuver, the less he asks in terms of slaughter. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. We've included gaming in our lives for a long time. There are many different kinds of games, including video games, mobile games, and PC games. With the use of cloud services, it enables players from all over the world to interact and play together. Super Mario, Nintendo, Call of Duty, PUBG, Free Fire, Battlefield, and other games are available. Currently, video game series are a mainstay of the business and have given players all around the world some of the most unforgettable single and multiplayer experiences. And so, the gaming franchise, Battlefield and Call of Duty's weaponry parallel are here to acknowledge you. The next time you play, you better be knowing the rifle. Let's dig in. Battlefield is a first-person shooter video game that was initially released in 2002. Battlefield 1942 was the title of the first video game to be released. Large battlefields, vehicle combat, and teamwork are just a few of the game's many elements. A first-person shooter video game is named Call of Duty, or COD as it's more often known. Whereas a free online multiplayer game called Call of Duty Online was released by Tencent Games in 2012. It offers a variety of thrilling modes, including cyborgs, hero ops, single-player missions, and others. The makers of games must occasionally update them because players tend to play one game for a while before quitting if they get bored. People have been playing the various modes in Call of Duty and Battlefield for more than a decade or two. The player's experience in Call of Duty is dynamic, whereas the player's experience in Battlefield is more realistic. It's a first-person shooter video game with a focus on guns, shooting, and weapon combat. The protagonist is handled by the main player, main shooter in the game. Every COD has a few guns that everyone used constantly in terms of weapons. The M4 or ACR in COD4, the MP5 in MW2, etc. The AK-74U from Battlefield 3 through 4 comes to mind when we think of Battlefield video games. Some of Call of Duty's weaponry, such sniper-like shotguns and assault rifles with laser beam accuracy, had no business being that good. Here, we take a look back at some of the most ludicrously powerful and well-liked weapons to have ever appeared in a Call of Duty game and analyze them. The S6 Stingray, a two-round burst tactical rifle featured in Black Ops 4, had tremendous damage and a quick time to kill. The S6 Stingray was easy to use thanks to the gun's exceptional accuracy and handling. The weapon also had an operator mod that gave powerful explosive rounds that were challenging to block as if the standard stats weren't robust enough. The contraband tiers in the game's battle pass style system allowed players to level up and acquire the crates for free, but each one contained a random item. If you can get your shots on target with the MP5 submachine gun, a somewhat more close-ranged focus version of the MP7, it hits very hard. At a distance, damage is significantly reduced, but as long as you have the MP5, you'll never have trouble in close spaces. It's really up to you whether you prefer the MP7 or this because of how quickly it kills time in multiplayer. M4A1 Assault Rifle The biggest advantage this weapon has over weapons like the Grau, Kilo, and Bruin is its rapid fire rate, which, if you can hit your targets, turns it into a mid to long range shredder. We also like this thing's attachment options very much. There's a ridiculous amount of versatility on offer here, so much so, you really can't go wrong with the M4A1. Our favorite submachine gun in the game is the MP7, which offers a surprising amount of stability and damage to the respectable range. It's certainly worth trying when you can. It's unlocked at level 54. The large amount of M4A1 users won't be able to easily pin you down if you come around a corner at them, 
because you'll defeat assault rifle users with reasonable ease in close quarters as well. PKM Light Machine Gun Use the PKM for combat at a greater distance. As long as you can ignore its lack of mobility and poor aim down sight speed, the PKM is one of the most adaptable weapons in the game, capable of engaging both snipers and assault rifles in combat. It has a very quick time to kill. Battlefield 2042 scenarios almost always favor guns with a high rate of fire because if you keep shooting someone while they're trying to aim down the sight of a marksman rifle, you'll throw off their aim. The AK-24 is in high demand due to its excellent stopping power characteristics. Additionally, there are certain regrettably unnecessary weapons in Battlefield 2042, such as shotguns, which regrettably serve little purpose in a game that normally focuses on mid- to long-range firefights. The AK-24 can be unlocked at player level 11, which is why so many players in Battlefield 2042's Conquest and Breakthrough modes use it. You're gonna die a lot in Battlefield 2042 thanks to the PP-29, for the simple reason that it works in almost every situation a ton of players choose the PP-29 at close range during the first weekend of Battle 2042's early access phase. In Conquest and Breakthrough, the PP-29 is an incredibly rapid weapon that's ideal for attacking or defending different points. As of right now, Battlefield 2042 only provides players with the LCMG and the PKPBP as LMG options. The latter of the two guns won't be available to you until you reach player level 32, but that's okay because Battlefield 2042's LCMG is available right away and is, in fact, the better weapon. Without a doubt, the LCMG is most effective when utilized to shell opponents from at least mid-range. The weapon boasts strong firepower, excellent accuracy, and a long range and it isn't even let down by shaky handling. The LCMG can perform all tasks as long as you're not holding the trigger down for lengthy periods of time at a distance. In the early hours of Battlefield 2042, the DM-7 is a perfectly reliable marksman rifle, but the SVK has a much stronger punch. In contrast to the DM-7, which has more control but less stopping power, the SVK sacrifices some accuracy in handling for far more firepower, making the sacrifice worthwhile. It'll take two bullets to kill the vast majority of enemy players anyplace else on the body with the SVK, with the apparent exception of whether or not they have any armor plates equipped. However, if you wish to improve the rifle's handling and accuracy in any way, you may choose to acquire and equip the Tactical Compensator, which can be obtained by killing 120 enemies with the rifle in total. Rather than an SMG, the MP9 is more of a machine pistol. Given its diminutive size, it naturally has quick handling compared to other SMGs, manageable recoil, and a quick 900 RPM fire rate, but it lacks in pretty much all other areas. Extremely mobile specialists like McKay who likes stealthier playstyles or an aggressive run and gun should use this weapon. For a marksman weapon, the V-Car is a little peculiar. It has very little firepower and is quite compact, but it compensates for this with a big 20-round magazine and a 450 RPM firing rate. The V-Car actually performs like a single-fire SMG up close, but more closely resembles a longer-range pistol for chipping away at foes who are further away. Accuracy is essential when using this weapon because failing to hit your target will allow other weapon types to easily outclass you. So, if you pick up a weapon we've listed as low tier and are absolutely killing it, let us know. Maybe you're smashing it and we're missing a trick. That's all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time. Adios.